Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to edit like Epic Rika in Premiere Pro and Photoshop. Let's get started. So what we're going to do in this tutorial guys is we're going to go step by step to creating an Ep Rika style video. And although he uses Sony Vegas, I'll be teaching you how to do something similar. Let's start with our first item, the title. To get the font, what you're going to need to do is download a font called Dr. Glitch, which I will link in the description. It will be an open type or a true type font. Press the download button and it should come up like this. Seeing the text, the quick flocks runs over the lazy dog. Firstly, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to unlock the layer and press that lock button. From there, we're going to want to press the M key or go over to the side panel and then we're going to want to delete it by pressing the delete button over to the side. From there, we're going to create some text. We're going to put the text, let's try this. And we're going to select the font. Now let's make it bigger and center it. Let's right click on the layer known as let's try this, also known as our first layer. From there, you're going to right click and click on an icon called blending options, which will lead us to this screen. To create the outlined effect in an object, we are going to press the icon that says stroke over here. Once we are on the icon that says stroke, we are going to set the size of the stroke to outside and 8. After we're done placing our stroke, click on the icon that is known as drop shadow. Set the drop shadow to 35 distance and 35% opacity to create a glowing effect like look. This is probably the most important process, also known as keyframing. I've placed an epic Rika image onto my timeline. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the inflation size. From here, I'm going to create a keyframe by pressing on that icon right there, the stopwatch icon. Then from there, I'm going to right click the icon. And then from there, I will click on continuous bezier, which makes the frame help to be more smoother. Now that I've got my continuous bezier set, I'm going to create another frame by moving it back to create the almost image of it going forward and back, which gives me this animation right here. However, it doesn't look smooth enough. With a 1920 by 1080 image, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the values to around 1000 to make it look like it goes forward and it goes back, overall creating a more smoother animation. Now let's test how that looks in retrospective. As you can see, it gives us a swinging hand animation. Neat! Let's experiment with a sizing keyframe. So I've placed another image of Epic Rika on our timeline. We're going to go back to effect controls and we're going to set the scale to around an appropriate size. We're going to move a frame forward, press the scale icon as seen here. Now from here, we're going to right click it and we're going to create it to become a continuous as in the process of the last step. Now, we're going to make the scale 0 at the beginning of the timeline and space it about just a bit. Now, we're going to move 3 or 4 frames forward so it makes this animation right here. It looks smooth, but we're going to make it smoother. Let's set the scale to around 110 and then 84 again. In our preview renderer, you will see that it looks like this. Now, isn't that neat? going to do with this clip is we're going to apply effect on the side panel called wave warp. We're then going to place a continual keyframe there and we're going to adjust the wave warp length. From the wave warp length we are going to also turn that into a continual keyframe and then we are going to set the wavelength to 1 to make it have a fade out transition. We are then going to set that off and we are going to set the wave speed to around somewhere a high value. Then we're going to go back and set it to high value and then a low value, so therefore it comes out as a fade out transition. Let's see how that looks. See, it's pretty cool. That's all for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Next time I'll try and make a shade tutorial. If you'd like to download the resources, they will all be in the links in the description. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you can subscribe. See you in the next video.